Hey folks, this is Dave Gleason. I'm head coach here at Athletic Revolution in Pembroke, Massachusetts. And today I want to talk to you about gameplay, but more in the context of how to potentially implement it into your current programming if you're not already. Um, there's a lot of room and a lot of variance with this, so I want to try to nail this down a little bit for you. So hopefully it will help you uh, expand your programming and make it all that much better. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is non-specific warm-up. We'll do this all the time, especially with our younger kids. Believe it or not, our high school groups, our more elite athletes will do this as well. Think about it, after a long day at school, sitting and trying to focus, sitting and trying to focus with no outlet really, uh, for any physical activity or outlet to like just let it all out, sometimes it's great just to come in and play, uncoached. Now for me, it's also a time where I can observe the kids, again in an uncoached, non-specific way, where I get to watch how they're moving, see what their temperament seems to be for the day as a whole. Maybe I can key in on a few kids that seem to be struggling for some reason. You know, I'm just, I'm always looking at kids' faces and they kind of wear their emotions sometimes or the way that they're feeling that day right on their face. So it helps you key in and, and give them a better experience during that class or that session so everybody gets more out of it. So non-specific warm-up, uh, that's a great time for you know, some, just some easy gameplay. Uh, another thing that we'll use it for is practical exploration of learned skills. Now what I mean by that is, you know, after, we, um, after we might work on, say, the skill of skipping, this might be a, uh, you know, a very uh, rudimentary example, but we'll use skipping. So maybe we're working on skipping, arm action, whatever it may be, maybe it's a, a certain variation of skipping that we're working on that day. Then we'll back up that, that skill session, that skill time, with a game, like tag. Okay, and then we can layer in rules, like if you're moving, you have to be skipping. Um, so it's, you know, the, it's more practical to using it in a game situation. Um, they're not thinking about it so much, and I get to watch and see how much they've actually absorbed. Um, see what we might need to work on a little bit more, and then start to develop. Maybe I need to use better cueing. Whatever it is, maybe they just need more opportunity to practice, who knows. Um, specific application of learned skills, or spe specific exploration of learned skills, things that we've been going over. Now, what, I, what do I mean by that? In the context of what we do here, we might play a game, let's just use dodgeball for instance again. I might layer in certain rules or boundaries so that we work on certain things that has been or maybe have been our theme over the past week or past few sessions. Let's say that we've been working on athletic stance in deceleration. Well, I'm gonna talk about that in the context of that game so that it's a little bit more specific, and I'll specifically layer in some boundaries or rules that makes them utilize those two things. So maybe we'll play dodgeball, and there's no blocking or catching the ball. That changes the game tremendously. It increases the intensity, yes, but now again, we can continually talk about and cue athletic stance, cue maybe what we were working on with deceleration or what we have been working on, getting them to change elevation. Who, who knows what it is? That's up to you. That's up to you in terms of where you are in your programming, where your kids are in the context of your program. So there's three spots. We might use it at the end of the day. We might use gameplay at the end of the day simply as a reward for a job, a great, great job. Um, you know, as the kids get older, they're not expecting a game, certainly, so when we layer in, I say, you know what? Let's put all the stuff away, or let's everybody get a drink, take a break, then we're gonna play. They light up, okay? Especially when I say, I'm really proud of you guys for the focus that you put in for the last 45 minutes. We're just gonna let loose and play, just to have fun at the end, okay? And that, that word fun, is a segue into the last reasoning, if you will, on implementing gameplay into programming. It's fun. It's absolutely fun. Sometimes you just need to do things because it's fun. So surprise your kids every now and then. In the middle of a session, if things are going well, especially, I shouldn't say especially, I'll tell you why in a second. If they're going well, reward them right there and then. You guys, guess what? Let's just take a break, let's just have some fun. Now let's say the session isn't going well. 
Let's say it's a week of standardized testing for your kids and they're just gassed mentally, psychologically, emotionally, any way that you can, you can think about it. They're tired, they're malnourished, they've been up all night studying, session's not going well. Play and have fun with your kids. That's why they're there. Yeah, they're there to get, you know, they increase all their biomotors and all this stuff. We all know that. Have fun. Let them have fun. Let them experience how fun activity is. Okay? Um, I hope this gives you some insight on how you can either further implement or start to implement gameplay into your sessions. Whether you're working with six year olds or 18 year olds, I'm telling you, it works. It works, it works, it works. So, um, you know, I hope you can take some of this information, bring it back, put it right in, or increase what you're doing now. I know that you're out there working hard. I appreciate that. We need as many warriors in this field as we can, as we can get to, uh, to help you know, do right by the kids that are in our community. So with that, I thank you. Thank you for watching the short video, and we'll be back soon. All right, thanks so much. Take care.